It was a Saturday afternoon in September of 1826. I was standing on the street in Greenville, Tennessee with a group of girlfriends when several of them, looking over my shoulder, began to titter. <laughs> well, I turned to see what was causing his joviality, and my eyes did see a curious thing indeed. Coming into town was the strangest sight I had ever seen. An old two-wheeled cart piled high with chairs, tables, pots, and pans being drawn by a blind pony. <laughs> there was a man and woman walking beside the cart, and leading the pony was a very attractive boy. What a handsome bow he'll make some Greenville girl when he gets his face washed, one of my friends jokingly remarked. Well, the strange group appeared to need help, so I stepped forward and the young man walked over to me. I approached a girl who had wavy light brown hair, large hazel eyes, a fair complexion, and a graceful figure. <laughs> Could you tell me where my family and me might find some shelter? I did more than that. I walked along with the folks. I showed them to Armitage's store, where the owners had an empty cabin. When I came back, my friends started kidding me about my new beau. I shocked the girls when I told them, he's all right. I might marry him someday. Eliza didn't know it, but I was saying the same thing about her to my mother. We didn't stay in Greenville, but for a short time, they moved about 40 miles away. The following March, though, I heard news that the tailor in Greenville had moved on, and that took me back there, because I was a tailor. The girls said Andy was more than just a tailor. The rumor was he was a tailor with a price on his head. <laughs> Eliza, it wasn't as bad as that. You see, when I was 14, my brother and I were apprenticed to a tailor as our fa family had fallen on hard times due to the untimely death of my father, who was a hero, by the way. You see, back in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I had been born on December 29th, 1808, my father jumped into the river to save Colonel Henderson one of the most prominent men in our city. But the matter so stressed him physically, he died months later. But Colonel Henderson wrote in my father's obituary, he held a humble but useful station in life, but he won esteem by his honesty, integrity, and humane and friendly disposition. And that's what I'm going to do with my life as well. Then Andy gave me this piece of newspaper to read. Ten dollars reward ran away from the subscriber on the night of the 15th. Two apprentice boys legally bound. So it was true. Yes, but that was a long way from here, and I've made my peace with that man, and I want to get on with my life, and I want to do it with you. On May 17th, 1827, Andy and I were married by the local squire, Mordecai Lincoln, a distant cousin to Abraham Lincoln. Andy was 18 years old, and I was 16 eventually taking our place in history is the youngest presidential couple to marry.